So, if we're thinking that we've got 2 billion bits of information, and that 2 billion bits of information is whittled down to about 5 or 9 bits, what happens to the rest of it? Well, there's a whole load of stuff that happens to the rest of it. One of the first things, or one, one thing that we do with information is that we generalise. And what does generalise mean? Well, generalise mean, generalize means that if something happens in one particular situation, then we can work out that that might happen again in the future. So just like my young daughter now, she's worked out that she's got a mum, and that mum goes off and makes a cup of tea, she knows that that person, when they come back, that's still their mother. They don't have to reinvent the fact that that's another person, and that person's still going to be nice to them and feed them. So they learn, we all learn to generalise with information, and we learn that what happens in one particular situation can happen again in the future. And that's how we learn, isn't it? If you all think about how you've learned, often it's easier to learn something when you're already familiar with some part of that information already. And that's what generalising. That's what we do. And generalising can be really useful because it does mean that we can chunk information together into bigger parts, which means that we don't have to learn stuff from scratch again. So that means that if we were learning a brand new technique for a particular activity, and that technique had all these little blocks of activity that we needed to learn to do it, Okay. Each of these is a particular aspect of that technique that we have to learn. If we were a complete beginner, we'd be learning all of these from scratch. And of course we know that we can't pay attention to each separate bit of information. So we'd have to just do a few. We'd have to ignore all of these. We'd have to learn that bit first. Then we'd have to do a few more. Then we'd have to do a few more. And then we'd chain all those together. And eventually we'd get the whole skill. And that's how beginners learn, isn't it? But as advanced people, because we're already good at a lot of these schools, what we're able to do is look at a new skill and work out, well, actually, I already understand a bit about that. For example, if you're, if you're already a good skier and you decide to take up surfing, so you understand about edges and you understand about carving and, and, and edging and that type of thing. So you can suddenly chunk bits of information together and say, well, that's a bit about edging. I already know about that. So that suddenly becomes just one unit of information. This next part, I can chunk those bits together because I've got experience of that somewhere else. So that becomes another unit of information. So what we can do is we can generalise what we already know and apply it to something new, which means that these chunks of information become bigger, even though they only take up the same amount of processing. Okay? So that's really, really useful. However, generalising can cause problems as well, because a lot of the time when you've seen people who may be scared to do an activity, what they've done is they've generalised something, some situation, something that's happened in the past, and they're applying that learning to a future event. So maybe someone was out walking one day, and they had to do a bit of a walk across maybe a little um, narrow ridge or something like that, and they slipped and they got scared. Okay, and okay, that was fine. Maybe they weren't. They were in a little bit of danger at that point in time, um, but it was no big deal really. Okay, but then they may never go out walking again, or they may never go out on that type of situation and put themselves in that type of environment again, because they've learned, they've generalised, that if that happened then, that's going to happen every single time I go out in the future. So generalising can be useful, because we can learn useful things, but it also means that we can quite easily learn and generalise less useful things as well. Okay, so that's generalisation. So distortion. Some of the information that's coming in in our senses, we distort it. So that basically means that we take different relevance of it um, to perhaps what it really, really is. So this is how I was talking about before, we all build up our own unique model of the world. So if you think about a time maybe when you've been out uh, and there's been a crowd of people and you see somebody, you know, oh, I know them, I know them, and you see the back of their head, so you run up behind them, you tap them on the shoulder, and they turn around and it's a complete stranger. 
Okay, that's a distortion. You've seen something and you've applied previous learning to it, but actually the information coming into your senses, you've distorted it, and it's really, it, 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 you've matched the wrong image coming in to your own mental map, as it were. So you've distorted some information there. How many times have you been, I'm really guilty of this, this is terrible, my wife goes out, goes out down, to, down to Hexham or something like that, she spends, I don't know, 30 quid, 40 quid on a hairdo, stuff like that, you know, have your eyebrows plucked, and then she'll come home, and of course, do I notice straight away? Uh, uh, I don't notice straight away. The reason I don't notice straight away is because I've got a mental picture of her. And as long as she looks similar to that, I don't need to take in... Yes. Do... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you're welcome. Oh, I don't need... So because she looks similar to my mental map of her, I don't need to take in any new information. I'm distorting what's coming in, thinking, yeah, she looks more or less like she looked last time I saw her this morning. That's fine. Did you have a nice day? Yes. What did you do today? I went to Hexham. Oh, did you have a nice time in Hexham? Yes. Did you do anything nice? Yes. And she's where they're waiting all the time, thinking, my hair, my hair, look at my hair, look at my makeup. And I'm, anyway, so it's a loss. So, so what I'm doing is I'm distorting the information coming in and that helps me that's a coping process that I have that helps me so that I can chunk down to this amount of information and process this amount of information so a lot of distortion goes on I can hear the hear the excuses coming up now yeah I wonder if she does distort the price I don't know. So then, the third thing that happens to information is that there's some deletion that goes on. Basically, we just delete information. If we think it's not relevant, we just ignore it. Okay? We think, well, okay, I'm in here now, we're all in here now, and there's a lot of information that's bombarding us here, and we do some kind of mental analysis, and we think, well, is that information important, or is it not important? And if we think that at an unconscious level it's not important, basically that information just gets deleted. And I'm sure, again, you can all think of times when maybe you've lost something in the house, you've lost your car keys, you've put a pen down, something that, you know, an everyday object that you've needed, and you've put it down, You've gone away, you've done something else, and you think, right, I need my car keys, I'm going to get my car keys. And you go back to the table, oh, they're not there, what have I done with them? Well, coat pocket, I'll go and check my coat pocket. You check your coat pocket, are they in the coat pocket? Of course they're not, where did I put them? My bag, I'll check my bag. You go and check your bag, and you look in your bag, they're not in your bag. And you think, well, what on earth have I done with them? I always put them on the table, what on earth could I have done with them? And then you think, well, I'll just have one more check. So you go back, and there they are. They're on the table. They're where you originally thought you'd put them. But something had happened that meant that you deleted that bit of information. Maybe your mind was elsewhere, or you were distracted. But you've deleted that. You've done that, haven't you? I can tell. So you've deleted that information. So that tends... They're, they're all coping, uh, coping methods, if you like. So of these two billion bits of information that we've got buzzing around our channels, it all gets whittled down, either through generalizations, through distortions, or through deletions, so that we only have these small amounts of information that we can hold in our minds at any one time.